Electricity. Electricity is what has modernized the world. We, we think of world development going from primitive cultures to very sophisticated cultures with the Industrial Revolution um, making mass production a viable option for farm equipment, for mechanical equipment, for battlefield equipment. And it did, it brought us a step closer, but electricity is what changes society from that industrial world to the now digital world. And it, it's the fastest way for a country to come out of their third world uh, existence and go into a second or first world existence. Electricity is, it's a miracle of modern ingenuity of whoever, uh, like Benjamin Franklin putting the key on the string and flying the kite in the electrical storm, um, Tesla, uh, Tom Edison, people who, Marconi, uh, figured out how to harness the power of electricity, where it originated from, and recreate it. Hang on. Somebody back there staring at me. Um, and everything that we like about our modern lives today runs on power. Uh, our vehicles, our computers, our lighting in our house, our uh, electrical furnaces, our air conditioners run on that. There are mechanical, you know, 100 year ago alternatives to the very modern electrical appliances and so on, but they're, they're harder to do and they're not as efficient. It's just how it is. Well, after the apocalypse, and that's presuming that you think there is going to be a, an apocalypse, and I'm not necessarily convinced of that, but I'm absolutely convinced of things like Katrina and fires in California happening, um, natural disasters happen all the time, and people lose power. And it's an event in their lives that many of them will remember. Our neighbor up uh, nearby remembers an ice storm in the area, and they were without power. I think he said 19 days. He knows exactly. Because it forces you out of your very modern existence back a hundred years to the other existence and to make up to um, come up with alternatives to the things you're used to. So washing dishes in your dishwasher becomes washing dishes by hand unless you run on propane. If you have propane appliances then you're fine um, unless they have an electrical ignition and then you're not fine. Um, cooking becomes something different if you're if you have an electrical stove you cook on your charcoal grill or you cook on a little camp stove that's run by propane or natural gas or something you um, go outside and you cook over a fire that's what it's going to be like after the apocalypse after um, an EMP or a natural disaster in your area and the power is out you will need to think about these alternatives and also cooling. So many people, even in an ice storm, will the, the freezer inside will start to thaw out and they will just throw all that food out. Not understanding, not in the mindset that if they put that food in a cooler or any other container to keep animals from breaking into it and just put it outside on their deck, the, you know, the ice storm will keep that frozen stuff frozen. So it's something for you to think about. And I was actually thinking about that today while I was washing dishes. I, my husband was stationed overseas in a third world country and there was no hot running water in the house we stayed in, even though it was a gorgeous 48 square hundred, 4,800 square foot kind of like mansion, there was only cold running water. So to wash our dishes to the sanita you know, sanitized standard that I was used to as an American, I boiled that water every day and washed it and sweated into that water because it was 100 degrees. And the boiled water is 210. So it's pretty hot water. Um, and of course I'd let it cool down a bit, but you want it hot so you can sanitize your dishes, so you can kill all the germs and get all the food off and everything, make them clean. You need to think about that. If you're a person who is convinced the whole system's gonna collapse, and again, I, I'm not one of those, but I'm absolutely convinced you could be put into a situation um, by a natural occurrence 
that forces you to do these things at least for a little while. Um, how are you going to boil that water? Where's that water going to come from? Because water systems, a, a lot of times are gravity fed, so it's possible that your water will continue running, but your electric hot water heater won't. And so how are you going to heat that water up? What are you going to wash your dishes in? Dish pans are something that it's really, it's, they're actually getting harder to find because so many people use dishwashers. Um, Having been in a situation where I've been washing dishes by hand now for seven years, you can wash your dishes even in the, if you have a large pot, in the large pot. You can use bowls. You can use anything that will hold the water. You, you need to get out of the mindset that it has to be a dishwasher or a dish pan. But two things that are essential to washing dishes that you ought to have and you can store now are gloves. Because that 210 degree water is too hot for you to put your hands in. Um, and again, you can cool it down, but you don't want it so cool, like room temperature, that won't kill germs. Um, and the dish soap. Now, you can make soap from scratch. I've done that as well, and there's hundreds of recipes online on how to do it. But it's pretty convenient to go out and buy, a, you know, a dollar, two dollar, three dollar bottle of soap that's going to last you for a while, and it's not going to go bad in storage. So think about those things. Um, and the and the pads or sponges or um, brushes, the, the things that you're going to use to actually rub the fit food off the dishes. You could always use, you know, one of your old skirts if you couldn't get a sponge, but the, the little sponges and brushes that we have now make it a lot easier to do. All right, I got to get on with my day. I hope this blesses someone. Shalom.